Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is not joining us tonight. So, I apologize to everybody. Hopefully she will be here next time. She needs her beauty rest. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm not going to argue beauty with rest. that. <clears throat> Got to turn that down. How is everybody doing tonight? If this is your first time coming to our live, welcome. Hopefully it doesn't get too R-rated for you and you wind up leaving. Sometimes it gets a little crazy in Eve's Knives Live. But uh, we definitely have a lot of fun. That's for sure. Hi, Amy. How you doing? And everybody else. Wallaby, Russ, Penny, Tim, Q1, Talica, Russ, Breeze. We got a bunch of people in here already. That's awesome. You know, I was thinking about... Um, this is your first live? Awesome. Welcome, Robert. Hopefully, uh, we can entertain you tonight. We talk about everything under the sun, from knives to everything else. Um, we uh, try to keep it fun and and uh, entertaining. Hey, Talica! Thanks, bud. Please mirror edge that ZT for me. Not a problem. Not a problem. Um... What was I going to say? I don't remember now. Talica messed me up, but it's okay. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Wednesdays. Uh, you know, I noticed that it seems like after like 8.30, more people wind up flooding in. And I'm wondering if there's something to that, if maybe like on Wednesdays, because I know Saturdays, um... Metal Complex sometimes goes live at 9 o'clock, so I wouldn't want to, you know, mix into his thing, even though he gets like a thousand, uh, you know, people in there, but I don't, you know, I still don't want to, you know, um, ours to cross paths, but on Wednesdays, I thought about possibly just testing one out and doing one at nine o'clock and seeing how it goes. I know that might be late for some people. Hey, Ma, I miss you too. I definitely miss you too. Um, I hate that, uh, Illinois is locking down again. What do you know? Um, but uh, I do want to mention one thing, though. The Spider Co. with Coochie. If you look on the screen, you'll see One Minute Knife Reviews is in the in the, the chat. And he also has a YouTube channel. So not only should you go and subscribe to his YouTube channel, but he has a Spider Co. with Coochie that he is getting rid of. And he's willing to trade. So, if you guys have a knife you're willing to trade for a Spider Co. Coochie, or possibly just want to buy one, go and get a hold of him on his channel. But at the very least, go and give him a sub. He's got some great content, great knives on his channel. Um, is it too late for you, Talica? Yeah, I know it'll be wind up being too late for some people, but I just feel, man, you know, and I don't know, it could be a bad idea. Um, but I just feel like it seems like like at 830, man, lots of people seem to crowd in. Um, who, you know, this it's kind of already set up at this time, and I have so many videos announcing it that I probably won't ever do it, but it was a good thought. Chris made it. The man with the, the badass beard made it. Um, I called it a month ago and said it would close down just before Thanksgiving. I know. It's, uh, it's, it's pathetic. So pathetic, but it is what it is. Um, whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, I I basically uh, stay home anyways. But I I think about um, some of the businesses that shut down, the people that are struggling to pay bills right now. And I'm not gonna sit here and get all you know political or anything like that. But uh, but yeah, I I just think about those people and uh, you know they're already struggling enough, let alone you know if you shut down again and then all the people, all the kids and you know all the depression and everything going around, um, it's insane. Um, but uh, hey, Aunt Don, um, I was watching uh, Demolition Ranch earlier. I don't know if you guys know what Demolition Ranch is, but it's a guy. He's got a bunch of guns and he shoots stuff. And uh, he had a block of titanium, you know, the same thing that comes on a lot of these knives. A block of titanium. And it was about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. It was a good-sized block, but he was shooting it with everything. And uh, nothing was even touching it. I mean, barely nicking it. 
Um, then he got up to uh, a 5.56 five, green tip, which is uh, very powerful. You know, if you know bullets and guns, um, different bullets penetrate farther, even with the same gun, um, same caliper. But anyway, so it uh, that nicked it. Then he went up to the 50 BMG. I think he went up to one more before that. He did a 7.62. That didn't do anything. But uh, he did the 50 BMG, and it left a, a little dent. Then he did, or did, it left a pretty decent dent. But then he did an armor-piercing 50 BMG, which is called, the I think, the black tip. Yeah, the black tip armor-piercing. And that it did not make it all the way through. You'd think it would because it's a 50 BMG, but it still it penetrated all the way to the other side, and then like um, the other side had a big old dent, so like the bullet was stuck inside of there. But that was super impressive, and lets you know how really how hard and strong titanium is. I couldn't believe it didn't make it through. Uh, Oh, you great Wall, do you watch him? Yeah, he, he's definitely funny. He's been he's been uh, doing YouTube videos for a, a good while now. Um, you think two sons are going to be on sale? Need to get me a TS one twenty nine, possibly. I know you can go um in my links usually, and I got one in there for a hundred and thirty for the M three ninety version. Um, and that's what uh, a lot of other places sell it for. So I think, I don't know if on Black Friday, if there'll be more on sale, probably not. Um, you know, on Black Friday, some stuff, like they usually have like Blade HQ and, you know, other uh, knife companies have deals. But certain knives and certain knife companies, they're already such a good deal. They can't, they can't do that with them. You know, um, with two sons, I mean, it's possible White Mountain Knives might throw a deal where they're doing percentages off on everything, but I doubt they'll do it for Two Sons. Two Sons, we make the market on, and so I'm assuming that White Mountain Knives has a deal with Two Sons where they pre-buy them and then just sell them and then mark them up 15% or something. But they're already such a screaming deal. You're, you're basically, it's Black Friday every day for Two Sons. So, you're already getting a good deal. Um, yeah, my internet is being weak here, too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Seems like mine's working pretty good, so it's definitely on your guys' end. Yesterday, he shot a block of tongues and said, I seen that. That was, it was like a 40-pound, uh, 4 by 4 so 4 inches by 4 inches cube. And he said it was like 40 pounds. Can you imagine just a 4-inch block? being 40 pounds who tongue said is some hard stuff um very very hard um lisa Pay oh no what did my mom say well joe has been exposed so we're waiting um I, i'm sure he'll be just fine but um um yeah hopefully everything's okay i'll um i'll call you tomorrow and check on him but i'm sure he'll be just fine um does does every so often no worries um yeah it's probably your end um better make a tongue stud knife with a good lock i don't know how that would work with uh with knives one i think it'd be incredibly heavy um i'm not sure the weight ratio compared to copper um but we do do copper knives and that's very heavy like the difference between this Manix and uh, the other Manixes, even my titanium Manix, I mean, it's the titanium made it heavier, but this one is pretty damn heavy. Um, but I, I kind of like that that feeling of the weight. Like, I, I like light knives too. I think light knives are awesome, I think they're amazing, but I think there's something to having a little bit of weight in your tool. Now, that being said, sometimes I feel like people in general just on the grand scheme of things, they feel like weight has a little bit to do with the value. So they'll grab one knife and it'll feel like nothing. And they'll think it's cheap because it feels so light when it's the other way around. Good knives usually have good weight relief and are good are made with lightweight, strong materials. So it definitely uh, feels like maybe they're a little cheaper, but they're actually more expensive. It's actually vice versa in the knife community. 
Usually, usually. Tungsten is really close to the weight of gold. Yeah, I heard it's um, heavier than gold. Um, I think he even said that in the video, that pound for pound it's heavier than gold. And gold is very heavy. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I think Sandrin only makes super thin knives so it doesn't get too heavy. Um, I'll have to check them out. I've never even uh, heard of them or seen them. I would look it up right now, but uh, I'd have to get off the chat. Um, ring that bell. Uh, wait, did, did we get a one? Oh, man. It passed me up so quick. I was looking up at the camera. All the, all the comments came in. I'm sorry. Hey, thanks, bud. I appreciate it. Oh, man. I mean, it, like the, the comments came in so quick, it got out of my view. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. That's awesome. I'm going to have to make sure I keep an eye on that thing. There wasn't no, nothing else I missed, was there? No, I don't think so. Jared, you got, yeah, I'm sorry I missed that damn bell. I still like aluminum, too. Plenty strong. Doubt anyone broke a uh, suck of elite or even a, a 940. No, you know, aluminum is a, a great knife material. And, you know... They were making the the SOCOMs out of the, what was what is it, uh, they have 6160 and then what was it, 7160 or something, 7170, I forget what it was, but it was a little bit higher grade aluminum than the 6160, which is what's normally on knives, and that's a very strong aluminum, a lot of people don't understand that it, that's uh, an even better aluminum than what you know you normally see around you know when you think of aluminum so it's a very strong aluminum not only that but it's very light and it's perfect for knives the one downfall in my opinion is that it does scratch easily um because it's not even though it's strong and it is hard because it's a metal it's also soft for you know compared to some metals but um but no, I think aluminum's fantastic. Kara is relaxing. She's uh, she's not at work. She just got off work not that long ago, and she's had a long week. And then she's got a still a long week. She's not going to be off until Thanksgiving, and then she's uh, got to work the whole weekend after that. So she's relaxing. Um, what do you think about the Noilox? I don't know what the Noilox is. Noilox. I'm actually, uh, man, you guys are going to make me start looking stuff up. I wish, you know what? Soon, man, I'm going to have this, this area set up. I really am. I'm going to be investing in this damn system of mine pretty soon where I'm going to have double monitors and stuff like that. Hey, Shane. Thanks, man. I appreciate the donation. Thank you. Stas is in the house. What's up, Stasa? Stasa 23 is in the house, but yeah, I need to get a couple different monitors so that I can look stuff up, talk to you guys at the same time, and just do everything, um, you know, accordingly. You know, I was having a conversation, and I know this doesn't mean anything, and I'll just, you know, blow past it really quick, um, because I don't think that he's in the chat or anything, but we were having a conversation originally on a live a couple weeks ago, and then we went to Instagram, and we had a really good conversation um, we're having a really good conversation because we had difference in opinions on diet and what's the healthiest and stuff like that. And we had a difference in opinions and um, he was trying to prove his to me, you know, and vice versa. And uh, it was a really good conversation. And we were going to bring it back up in a live where I could actually talk because sometimes I feel like typing it doesn't transpire the way it's coming out of your mouth. Sometimes, one, I think people can take you rude when you're not trying to be rude. And I'm not saying he did. I'm saying I feel like he, that happens. And then also, you're trying to get so much into a compact, you know, sentence or, you know, paragraph that it just sometimes just doesn't translate. But what's up, Ethan? But um but basically, and I'm going to sum his argument up and I'm sure I'm going to destroy it, but basically, he was saying that um you know, like at the beginning of time, when we first started eating stuff, you know, and whatever, we were uh, herbivores. That's what he's saying. He's saying, like, looking at the teeth and stuff like that, you know, like a lot of scientists say that we were herbivores. And um, I'm saying we're omnivores because we are omnivores now. 
but I'm saying through history, I don't like to look at right, like, say, the farthest bones in history. Because if you look at it like that, we didn't know, we were eating whatever we could, right? Whatever we could possibly eat, we were eating. And then if you look at through history, and a lot of um, scientists and stuff like this will agree with this also, and this is the one I like to follow, that through history, lots of um times we were carnivores because we couldn't eat anything else whether it was too cold or just the abundance of other things like obviously we ate what we could but for the majority it was meat and then in other places we thrived being um you know um just basically you know fruits and whatever you know um you know finding whatever we can but my point is is that <clears throat> Through history, we've survived so many times off of different things that I feel like there's a lot of different people. And if if any dietrician or whatever they're called, a diet person, ever tells you that this is the one diet that's perfect for everybody, run. Because they're trying to sell you something. Because they're lying. There are so many different allergies. Some foods react differently to some people. So there's no one specific diet that's just perfect for everybody across the board. Now, there's a, a diets that have, like, a big range. Like, say, the 2020 diet, they have, like, listings of different foods. So, if you can't eat this, eat this type stuff. But um, I feel like that certain – everybody is different. So, what works for me won't work for you. What works for you won't work for that person. So, I feel like certain people, certain diets are going to just work better for them. And then other diets are going to work for better for other people. And I feel like you got to find what works for you. Especially with, you know, your ancestors and everything else going on for centuries and centuries and hundreds of years, you know, the, the, we all ate different stuff depending on where we, uh, I guess, lived and grew up or whatever. Not me now, but in history. And in my bloodline, man, I'm a damn mutt. I'm a mixed breed. I'm about the biggest mixed breed you could ever find in your life. If you look at my 23 and 1, whew. Is a long list. <laughs> there's everything in there. We just found there's Egyptian in there. I mean, there's uh, even Jewish in there, but it's mostly European and Irish. But I mean, there's even African. There's uh, everything's in there. I mean, literally everything. But it's strongly Europe, or it's got mostly like Irish, European, stuff like that. Have you handled a real steel kuma yet? No, I have not. I don't even know. I might know what it is if I looked at it because I usually keep up with real steel. Best diet is the one you stick to. I think the best diet is what works for you. I think there's different body shapes, body sizes, and depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to lose weight, then your best diet, one, is to eat less calories than you're using. So if you're burning 2,000 calories a day, then you should only be eating 1,500 calories a day. And then that should be healthy calories. And, um, you know, some people react differently to certain foods, so you got to find out what reacts best for you. Um, Akuma like Street Fighter? Huh. What's the trade offer? One minute is speaking of. Um, well, I think you need to offer him something. He's got, you know, the... Um, the spider coat, a coochie, and I, I think, I think he's open. I think he's open for suggestions. Um, but yes, it's for the spider coat, a coochie. What's up, Isaac? Um, but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I think, um, just eating, like, um, being like, say, a herbivore, and say, just eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, berries, stuff like that. And there's lots of other things, and there's lots of ways to eat proteins. I'm, you know, I'm not ignorant to that, but I feel like uh, certain meats, fishes, uh, like fish, for a lot of especially men, um, including women too, but it's very healthy uh, for men. And um, I think certain meats, not all meats, but a lot of meats are very healthy to eat, and it's a good source of protein. Eggs, good source of protein. Um, and I think some people just do good with it, especially if you're the type of person that uh, likes to uh, work out and you burn a lot of en energy. I burn a ton of energy, so I got to have. You gave up sugar five years ago. I haven't gave it up completely, but I am close, like not fully giving it up, but I stopped 
mostly most of sodas i do drink my energy drinks but that's it and i don't drink them every day but um i did stop drinking you know most sodas besides my energy drinks kool-aids juices for the most part like i'll take a sip every now and then but no, I'm not really drinking that any of that stuff. I'll, like my sugar in my coffee, I went from a lot of sugar in my coffee to just a little tiny amount. Like right now, if I drank the coffee I used to drink, ooh, it'd be disgusting. But um, beer has a lot of sugar in it. Alcohol has a ton of sugar in it. Um, like sugar, beer and alcohol are very bad for um for people that are diabetic. Um. But anyways, so I am trying to eat and drink and everything a lot healthier. Um, I was going to say something about that. Oh, yeah. Um, dang it. Now I lost it again. No matter. Any sugar or salt at all. That's awesome. That's good for you. Oh, yeah. So sugar, right? So we're not that great with sugar here in the United States. But there's an island. I think it's a country, continent, whatever, um, of people. Um, anyways, it's an island of people, and basically all they eat is sugar. And they are super healthy. They live a very, very long life, one, a long life. Two, they're super healthy, super lean, muscular, but it's because their energy level and the things they have to do to catch uh, food and work and everything like they eat a large like their diet is like 80 percent sugar or something like that. it's like a large amount i forget exactly what it was and i don't want to lie but it's a massive amount of sugar um more than we eat and they all are doing very good but it's because of what they do and that's kind of goes to my argument you know what you do and who you are and how much energy you put off that all matters because either one, your body is going to turn it into energy or turn it into fat. You know, there's ways that uh, your body reacts to certain things depending on what you do. The Akuma is at Chicago Knife Works now for $77. I, I'm going to have to look it up. Um, black coffee for the win. Um, I'm 150 pounds soaking wet. I used to be 150 pounds. I'm trying to gain as much as possible. I'm six foot, so um, I'm pretty, I mean, I guess that's not like really tall, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm not short, I guess. But um, I'm like 170, 175 right now. I'm uh, trying to get my, 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 I feel like my fighting weight is like 185, but, um, but I was at 180. A few months ago, um, I felt really good, so I feel like 185 would be like a good fighting weight for me. But I usually stick right around 170. But I'm gonna improve that uh, by uh, my increase in protein. So for me to bulk up, I need to eat 0.5 grams to 0.8 grams of protein per per. Uh, per pound so that would be like 90 85 90 um grams of protein a day that's a large amount of protein for me to bulk up i don't know if i could possibly do it without supplements so i do have protein shakes that i drink after working out there's like um with two scoops of it i get about 64 grams of protein Why are we fighting? Um, why not? <laughs> that's, good. that's a good answer, Florian. Why not? No, it's just a term like um, like your best fit, your best weight. It's um, it's just a term. Your fighting weight, you know, like what if you had to go into battle, what weight would you want to go into it with? I know everybody's thinking like, oh, I want to fucking bulk up as big as possible. That's not always true. You also want to be fast, agile, swift. You want to have stamina. All that stuff. So once you go over your fighting weight, your stamina and a lot of things will go down. Once you go below your fighting weight, you're going to lose strength and, um, you know, other things. So it's just basically like a, a happy medium weight of where you feel good. Um, the weight of a large number of allies. <laughs> and I got it back. And, uh, wait. 
not being blurry, what did I miss? You missed we were talking about diets and One Minute Knife Reviews has a spider co with coochies wanting to trade or possibly sell. Talked about shooting things. And, um, oh, listen, this is very important, guys. Um, if, like, JT's Knife Life, I haven't said anything yet, but I, I feel like I should. If you guys are friends with him or anything, let him know to, to monetize his channel. YouTube, after January, is going to monetize it for him. They will make money off of him. Anybody who has a channel, even if it's a little channel, and you're not monetized, and even if you can't monetize yet, which he can, they are going to throw ads on your videos. Every video that that's worth a fuck, I guess, so to speak, any video that gets, you know, views or whatever, that they want to, basically. They're going to make money off of you. And you can't do anything about it, meaning, like, you're not going to get anything. So they're not going to put ads on you and give you money. So if you're not monetized, they're robbing you. Not really. I know it's their platform, and you're just using their platform, but they're going to throw ads on your videos regardless, so you might as well make something off of it, right? But that's, they're already doing it in other countries. The only, you, uh, the U.S. is going to be last. I believe it's going to be last. Don't quote me on that, but it's going to be after January. It's going to come here. <clears throat> um, you know, it, yes, they are. And you guys already know. I mean, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, they're all, you know, it, it is what it is, but, uh, you, you know what I like right now? I like the people that are suing them for, um, like, uh, Candace Owens. She's suing Twitter, not specifically Twitter, but the, the, I forget the guy's name, um, Mark Zuckerberg or whatever his name is. Um, anyways, she's suing him. I don't think it's him. I think he's Facebook. I, I anyways, she's suing one of them for, for, um, silencing her speech for like a freedom of speech thing. And um, she's, she's probably going to win, first of all. And ever since she sued them, and she's got two of the best lawyers in America, like like the best. And um, if she, uh, or ever since she did sue them, they have not taken down one of her videos. Now, I also watched a video with Ted Cruz where he took, it was Mark Zuckerberg and then the other guy, the guy that, uh, like the CEO of Twitter and Facebook, both of those guys. Um, and man, <clears throat> he was proving left and right, <clears throat> excuse me, how they're silencing a certain group of people, um, and letting go the exact same thing from another group of people. And he's just proving it left and right. And I watched him in court and, uh, it was hilarious. It was awesome because you could see the guy he's trying he's squirming like trying to like figure out like ways to manipulate him as he's talking and Ted Cruz man he's a beast in court he's a beast so he wasn't easy and like he caught him he put his uh, foot in his mouth a couple times and he really busted his ass in that court so I'm thankful that that's happening that people are realizing it people are arguing back people are fighting against it and people are sick of them taking advantage and using their platforms to to do like okay it's their platform they have guidelines that's fine but the guidelines have to go across the board you can't use those guidelines to force what you want me to see down my throat you can't force that guidelines to silence what i say you can't force those guidelines to basically manipulate my opinion or like say because I can have my opinion on anything but they're like fact checkers right now fact checkers is the biggest crock of shit it's so hilarious like you'll actually know something as a fact like it's a fact and they'll literally fact check you on it on google it's hilarious and they and instead of like giving you like something different they'll literally say the thing but like twist it and it's so, it's so funny. Like, they'll say weird things like, um, it doesn't matter. You guys already know. Uh, but I just think it's, it's crazy that we're in a time where they're trying to do so many things for our safety. It's for your safety. It's for your safety. You got to do this because it's for your safety. You can't hear this because it's for your safety. Shouldn't watch that because it's for your safety. You know, like, everything is for your safety. And it's like, 
where is our rights, like our rights of freedom, our rights of movement, our rights of speech, all this stuff. I think it's so pathetic, but people are fighting back, which is amazing to me. So, And I find it all entertaining. If they're going to curate the, their platform, their publisher, and should lose Section 230 protections, right, exactly, because the one is um for a, um how does it go, how does it go, the one's like a pub, no, wait. Oh, I forget exactly how it goes. Like one's a publisher and one is like um um like not media but um apply like basically one either brings you information or another one is a platform for people to communicate through information. So but you have guidelines that protect you know you from certain things. I can't jaywalk for my safety. <laughs> um but yeah, it was kind of like uh, like she just put Proud Boys up. I think it's hilarious. Like they're trying to deem the Proud Boys as a racist group, a mixed organization that's full of all every mixed race you could imagine. The leader of it is a Cuban, and uh, they're trying to say they're white supremacists, fucking white supremacists. I think it's hilarious. And then when you like, if you fact like if you say something about that, like. You know, you can get fact-checked and all kinds of shit. And the guy, he's been on multiple uh, people's channels and went and talked and communicated. Seems like a, a really nice guy. He said they're just a group of people that, uh, I mean, I'm not going to speak for him, but seems like a decent guy. <clears throat> no, these guys are veterans. Are you talking about the Proud Boys? I'm talking about the, the leader of the Proud Boys. They're not all veterans. Um, some of them are veterans. Um, I watched an, a, at least three podcasts with the leader of the Proud Boys, and he explained the group very... He said it was basically like, a, um, you know, in uh, more or less words, like just a, a bunch of drinking buddies, a bunch of, drink, you know, a group. Obviously, they're, you know, they 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 like our Constitution. They, they fight, not fight, they... Um, they protest for our constitution and stuff like that, but they're the exact opposite of racist. They're actually fighting for our freedoms in a sense. I don't mean fighting like in war. I mean fighting through protests and, you know, stuff like that. But to say that they're white supremacists when, like I said, the leader is a Cuban. I think he's half Cuban, half black. Um, real stick, uh, folding knife, 3.74... Bowler K110 Blade G10 Ale. Bowler K110. I've never heard of that steel. Sounds like a, um, a decent sized knife at 3.74, though. Um, unrelated. How's your hand healing up, Jared? It, uh, it's healing. I still got it uh, glued together. So I think, though, um, this will be the last day I glue it because I think uh, it's. It's healed all the way up to just under the surface, like about, if you guys can see that or not, about that far under the surface, it's healed up to. So, I got a, it's going to be a scar. But man, I'll tell you what though, this damn rocks that it ain't no joke. This thing is sharp, boy. It is not no joke. And you know, it's not just that it's sharp. It's having that zero grind. Having that zero grind means it's going to cut deeper faster so another knife any knife i can pull out let's say this one it has an edge bevel so down here you have your sharpening bevel it has an edge bevel that creates a corner a hump so in order for that to go through something you got to get over that corner of the edge with this it doesn't have that it's just a straight edge so it goes deep quick and when it's polished and it's as sharp as it is, it's going to cut clean fast. Um, with other knives, they, they're going to have more bite, so they're going to be toothier, so they're going to be more saw-like. So this doesn't have that. There's no teeth at all. It's a, pol a mere polished edge. So <laughs> it's sharp. Um, I Wait, have you ever held a sharper knife than a rock set? I mean, I've sharpened knives sharper than a rock set. But like I said, I don't think it's the point of sharpness. Like, I've definitely sharpened knives 
that felt sharper. But this is the thing is that it's kind of hard to determine what's sharper because there's different, there's variables, right? So like I could be saying sharper <clears throat> and I might mean bite, you know, has more bite, right? So like I can sharpen an edge to 600 grit and that thing is insanely sharp. Like I had one today I sharpened, I could literally cut circles in paper. So hold a piece of paper and cut a circle. Um, paper towels, slicing paper towels like nothing. But it was it was a uh, thousand grit is what I went up to. Very it was pretty toothy, not shiny at all, a toothy edge. Now I could go up to say three thousand grit and it may, might not be toothy, <clears throat> but it's very sharp. Hey, Jack, thank you. Um, I'll speak on that one second. Um, and like with this, it's polished. So, and it's so polished up the blade, so it's a zero grind. I think a zero grind can possibly be the sharpest knife. So, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say that's the sharpest knife, but it's damn close. It's definitely in the top 10, I would say. Um, I feel like some of my edges might have been sharper at the edge, but not altogether because of it being a zero grind. Just like even um, fixed blades that have um, Scandi grinds. No, those things get wicked sharp. And I don't mean by a wicked sharp. I just mean they are very fucking sharp. Because they don't have that edge bevel. Other edges with an edge bevel, they are just as sharp. But they have the edge bevel, so it's got to get over that hump. Um, not now. Um, so, guacamole. I love guacamole. I love it. I'll, I'll, eat, it, I'll eat it out of the damn guacamole. But I like guacamole uh, across the board. Love it. Absolutely love it. When I was in, uh, Scanning Grinds are great. Kyle knows where this showcase is a bunch on his channel. He's a sharpener. Yeah, I've seen him. I got him, uh, on my channel. Not on my channel. I got his bell ring. I don't watch a lot of his videos, but I watch some of them. I've watched him, like, make knives and stuff like that. I'll eat it on a burger. I'll eat it for breakfast. I don't care. I like healthy things, first of all. So, like, to me, that's a form that's a, a very healthy thing especially for men to eat so um it actually can help even increase testosterone and stuff like that um so i enjoy it um yes we need more thumbs up yes definitely the open l's are good too very thin blades so razor like sharpness but zero grind on mine i could see that in open l being because they're so thin so they're going to be super thin behind the edge. Now, sometimes <clears throat> I'll have two knives, right? One that's so thin. So it's obviously going to cut through materials easier. But then I'll have, say, like something like this, like the Shaman, where it's thicker behind the edge, but I lay the edge back. So I put about 17 degree edge angle on it, and it's so damn sharp because of just how even the grip pattern is. You know, like when you have a nice even grip pattern, that does everything. So like if you have a grip pattern that's just all over the place, that's the teeth. So it's, it's gonna be sharp and it'll feel very sharp, but it's not going to be as sharp as if the teeth, the grip was all going the same direction. Think of a saw, right? A thing about a saw blade, where all the teeth on a saw blade are all going the same direction. Now think if you bent them all, right? If you bent all them teeth, like they're all going different directions. It's going to be, you know, it'll be sharp. It'll still cut. Um, and there are so, some saw blades that are like that. But when it comes to being sharp for the things we cut, it's better to have them all go in the same direction. I just bought a little native today. Love it so far awesome awesome um aren't they delicate with a zero grind yes and no so there's different so if you have okay so <clears throat> it's kind of hard to understand but like so if you have a knife that is say uh 20 degrees behind the edge right and a, a scandy or a zero grind is 20 degrees behind the edge it's going to be basically just as strong. They're both 20 degrees behind the edge. Now, the edge bevel does create a little more strength. It does. 
So it's not, it's going to be a little bit weaker. But there's now, think about this though. Think about if you have a knife at, say, 15, um, did I say degrees before? I meant to say thousands. I don't know if I did or not. I meant to say 20,000. So th think about a knife that's 15 thousandths behind the edge, meaning it's super thin behind the edge right here. 15 thousandths thin. Now you have a zero grind knife that's 20 thousandths behind the edge. Which one's stronger? I don't know because the edge bevel does make the one at 15 thousandths a little stronger, but I would have to imagine that they're probably just as strong. But I can't say for sure. I'd have to sit there and test them both, and I haven't had the opportunity to really test a zero grind, like, to that extent. Like, I've done it on fixed blades and stuff, but, um, like, you have to compare it with the same steel. You have to compare it with the same, you know, like, there's too many variables to say that without having the same knife, same thickness, same steel, same this, same that. Do you like the Manix 2 regular, and where's your favorite steel on that? Yes, I do. Um, honestly, right now, because I've tried a few of them, this Rex 45, I feel like, is my favorite as of right now. Okay, so I also have this one in M4, which I also really, really like. So both of those, possibly my favorites. Mine, my personal one, is an S30V. I don't have it sitting right here. It's actually right over across the thing, but I do have my large one, my XL, I mean. My XL is also an S30V. I have both of them an S30V, so they're not as good as steel as um, the, the M4, the Rex 45, but it's more stainless, so... Because those other steels aren't stainless, so... Um, M4 is my favorite. Rex is a great steel for it. Yeah, I think M4 is amazing. I love M4. Like, right now, my Spyderco Gale Bradley 2. Man, this thing, one, it takes... M4 takes a ridiculous sharp edge. I mean, it just... And it just holds up. It's just a tough steel. It can take the abuse, and it's got fantastic edge retention like right now i've sharpened this thing one time i still haven't resharpened it i think i've honed it once and i've used it at work um sorry i'm late i gotta go but i found time to sneak in well thanks for stopping by teddy we appreciate you bud um everybody who's in here thank you guys i appreciate you guys stopping in and um if you guys don't have the bell hit you guys should because we have some giveaways coming up soon also if you wouldn't mind dropping a like on the video it helps get the channel more uh out there more into more suggested uh videos on, for people while they're watching videos you know it helps me get into their suggestions so i would appreciate it laughing the pants what's up bud have you experienced any of the South African knife makers on Dirk Weirning's YouTube. I've okay, so I watched Dirk Weirning. His bells hit. I, I watch him. Um and love his channel, first of all. And I've experienced a few of the South American uh knives that have been on his channel. Not all of them, not the exact same ones, but I've probably experienced probably five or six South American knife companies now, or you know, knife people, makers, and yeah, they, uh, here's one right here, actually. Um, I think Arnold Bernard is, is Arnold Bernard a South, South African? I think it, hey, Floydian. This is a South African, uh, knife maker. Yeah, it is. Anyways, so my point is, is that yes, I have. And the one thing that they have that I love about South African knife maker, two things, actually. One, their action is so crisp like it's like their detents are so fine-tuned it's um it's hard to explain they almost feel like it's a light detent but it fires so perfect um it's there the action on them are is absolutely incredible some of the best action i've felt on knives have been from south africans also they're so basic that they're amazing. 
Like, they have the most... You can almost see a South African knife. Like, you can just see it and know that's a South African knife. Because they almost always have, like, a drop point blade, right? Or possibly a spear point blade. And then, um... A perfect, like, not straight, but, you know, just a regular handle. And then they usually have unique um, materials on them. But they don't go crazy. They don't try to make big, strong, hard-use knives. They don't make tact. They don't make tactical knives. They don't make, uh, you know, crazy knives. They make just EDC knives, and I love it. I talked to Andre Dorburn about it. He told me his trick is to spend way more time on the geometry and tolerances and you get that effortless action. I can imagine that because all the ones I felt, like, when you grab it and you flip it, you actually, you enjoy it. Like, you flip it and it's just like, as soon as you flip it for the first time, it doesn't fail. You never get it and go, wah, wah. You never do that. You grab it and it's just like, and you're like, wow. That's nice. You instantly like it. Like you might not like the knife right off the bat. You're like, yeah, it looks all right. You'll grab it and be like, hoo, hoo, hoo. you know what I mean? Like you just it has that effect on you. Um, Chris Reeves is originally from South Africa. I swear a lot of overall lines and profiles are inspired from his designs. Yeah, they are, but no but. Um, he made the you know like the the um Sabenza is, in my opinion, it's like the best version of a drop point. Also, the Code 4, I think, this one is the clip point, but I think I feel like the Code 4 drop point, that is a perfect version of a drop point blade, in my opinion. There's so many variations of drop points, right? So many. But I feel like his, with the hollow grind, that's another reason why I think this one is, because I feel like the drop point with the hollow grind, the way it is, is like the perfect version. I feel like one thing that could possibly be better, and this is possibly, is if you made a drop point with the same shape, but with a full hollow, meaning from the spine. So you literally have a drop point blade that has the hollow that goes all the way up to the spine. Possibly a tiny little flat on the top, but that's it. And, whoo, that'd be amazing. But yeah, um, I think, it, I, but you know, you got to say though, it's kind of, even like this, right? This is a, per, this to me is a perfect example of a drop point blade. Beautiful hollow. Yes, we're again. Good night.